The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salad better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. According to an old song, every cloud has a silver lining. In the life of the great Gildersleeve, the cloud is his bad-tempered neighbor across the street, Rumson Bullard. But the silver lining is Bullard's attractive sister, Paula Winthrop. This evening, the water commissioner took Paula to a movie, and now, in the late, quiet hours, the great man is bringing his lady home. Hmm. After midnight, Rockmorton. Oh, that was a long double feature. Yeah. I'll park here in your driveway behind your brother's car. Oh, why didn't you just park in front of the house? Well, my mother always told me to be off the streets by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought we might sit and chat a while. Well, we mustn't disturb Rumson. You're parked right under his window. And you know how upset he gets if he's awakened. Well, we'll be quiet. I'll turn off the motor and he'll never know we're here. There. Oh. Hey. Backfire. The water department will have to stop watering the gasoline. I, I think I'd better go in the house, Doc Morton. Paula, please. It's such a beautiful night. Well. It's the witching hour. Look at the romantic sky. If we stay here long enough, I may see a star fall and get a little wish. If you stay here long enough, you may see a shoe fall from that window. No. Let's get some music on the radio. Softly. If I can reach over and find the button. Oh, you better not. <laughs> Darn it. Touch the horn. Gildersleeve, is that you parked in my driveway? Uh, yes, it's me, Mr. Bullard. Sorry I honked. That's all right. Honking is expected of a silly goose. <laughs> goose? Who well, else won't happen again? You go back to bed now. No, I'm staying here at the window until you go to bed. Uh, Frank Norton, I must say good night. Yeah, we don't want him to catch cold. Well, it's been such a wonderful evening. I'm sorry it has to end. It doesn't have to end yet, Paula. We can sit here on the porch a minute. Oh, I don't think we'd better. Why not? He's gone back to bed. I have not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good night, Paula. Good night, Throckmorton. I'll give you a jingle tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Bullard. <laughs> Noisy neighbor. Slamming windows at this hour of the night. No consideration for other people. Now, just ease quietly out of the driveway. Eh, won't start. This car's giving me a lot of trouble. Darn car. Gildersleeve? Yes, Mr. Bullard? What are you doing now, mixing concrete? <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to get my concrete... Yeah, I mean, my car started. Gildersleeve, there's a geranium pot here on my windowsill. Oh? I'll give you ten to get across the street. Let me out of this car. Now, see here, Bullard. You aren't going to frighten me. One. Two. Now, I have no intention of running across the street. Three. Four. Five. Bullard, don't you throw that. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bullard! <laughs> Good morning, Leroy. 
with Marjorie. Hello, Anki. Anki, what's your car doing in Mr. Bullard's driveway? It's sitting there. <laughs> yeah, but why? Did you run out of gas, Anki? You were going to run out of gas. Why didn't you have it happen out at your reservoir? <laughs> no, children, I didn't run out of gas. I just left it there because it was a little hard to start. I didn't want to disturb anybody. Miss Gill, please. Yes, Bertie? How do you suppose that broken geranium pot got over here in the front yard? <laughs> geranium pot? It matches them over Mr. Bullard's house. Well, perhaps it fell out of his window. And bounced across the street? <laughs> well... Unky, I thought I heard you and Mr. Bullard having words last night. He sure gives you a bad time, Unc. Well, I guess he just resents my calling on his sister. I know how you can get even with him, Unc. Marry her. <laughs> Leroy, don't be silly. Boy, would he hate to have you for a brother-in-law. <laughs> Leroy, I'm not going to marry anybody just to get even with Bullard. <clears throat> Besides, neither Paula nor I have any idea of marriage. At least I haven't. Our relationship is purely platonic. <laughs> Leroy. Well, I don't think Mr. Bullard considers it purely platonic. No, ma'am. <laughs> Watch this, Bertie. Mr. Bullard is afraid the wedding bells are going to start ringing. There's no basis for that, Bertie. Yes, sir. When he thinks about you two getting the knot tied, he's fit to be tied. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. No, sir, but he is. Well, let him. You ain't going to worry about it, Miss Killsleeve. You bet I'm not. And Miss Marjorie ain't going to worry about it. <laughs> of course not. And Leroy, he ain't going to worry about it. Heck no. And is Bertie going to worry about it? No, sir, but Mr. Bullard is. Because when he thinks about you two getting the knocked out, he's fit to be tired. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'd better go get my car to Bullard's driveway. Oh, uh, by the way, Anki, when you go to town, would you mind taking my engagement ring to the jewelers? Your engagement ring? What are you and Bronco going to do? Hock it to build your house? <laughs> no, Leroy. The stone's a little loose in the setting, Anki. Will you have it tightened? Sure. I'll take it to that fellow next door to Peavy. He'll fix it in a jiffy. Hey, Uncle, Mr. Bullard's trying to get his car out, and you're blocking his driveway. Who? Well, well, good for me. Listen to that. Aren't you going to do something, Unky? Yeah, let him honk, the big goose. <laughs> now what's he trying to do? I think he's trying to run right over your car. He's pushing you out into the street, Unky. Oh, by George, I'll put a stop to that. Let him go, Unky. Your old car will cut his to ribbons. <laughs> you know, you're talking about our family car. Bullard! What do you think you're doing? It's can day, Gildersleeve, and I'm pushing one out into the street. <laughs> Don't take that off him, Unc. He's talking about our family car. Bullard, where are you pushing my car? I'm pushing it up on your lawn unless you get in and steer it. Yeah, all right, I'll get in. But watch it. Are you ready, Gildersleeve? You're all set. Easy does it. on my lawn. He's a hard man to like. <laughs> I'm late at the office, but I'd better leave Marjorie's ring at the jewelers. He... Not open yet. It was 9.30. Who does he think he is? Tiffany's? <laughs> Well, I'll go next door to Peavy's and wait until he opens. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? You can fix me a Coke, Peavy. Yeah. Well. I'm a little thirsty. <laughs> Excuse me for mentioning it, Mr. Gildersleeve, but you've got your makeup on crooked this morning. Makeup? Just look in the mirror. Well, oh, car grease on my nose. Getting nosy around cars, are you? <laughs> I had a little trouble starting mine, Petey. I had a little trouble with Rumson Bullard, too. He pushed me right off the sidewalk. Well, why didn't you push him back? <laughs> right, George. If I could have got going, I'd have smacked him back all right. Left me sitting right on the lawn. You don't change. Knocked off my bumper guard. My, my, I didn't know you wore a bumper. <laughs> I'm talking about the car, and you know it. 
I'd leave my car parked in his driveway. Hmm, he wouldn't like that. You, Peavy, I had a date with his sister last night. <laughs> you wouldn't like that, either. <laughs> well, I don't care whether he likes it or not. What Paula and I do is none of his business. And I told him so. And he left you sitting on the lawn. <laughs> be all right, Peavy. Let's drop the subject. From now on, Bullard can go his way, and Paula and I will go ours. Now, you better get ready to go one way or the other. <laughs> What's this, Peavy? I see Mr. Bullard pulling up out front, parking right behind you. Yes, sir. I'm in no mood to bump into him again this morning. I might lose my temper. Is that bad? The pharmacy has bandages, iodine, some club steaks behind the lunch counter for black eyes. That'll do, Peavy. Here, do me a favor. No, no. When the jeweler next door opens, give him this ring. I want the setting tightened. What kind of ring is it, Mr. Gildersby? It's an engagement ring. What does it look like? It looks like an engagement ring. Yeah. Yeah, I have to run now. Oh. You again. Yeah. And you again. <laughs> good, uh, good morning, Phoebe. Oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Phoebe, give me a pound of my pipe tobacco and a carton of this. What's this? A diamond ring? An engagement ring. You mean you've started selling engagement rings? No, that belongs to Mr. Gildersby. It does? He asked me to give it to the jeweler next door. It seems he wants the stone tightened. Oh, let me see that ring. Well, handle it carefully, Mr. Bullard. Those things are expensive. I know, I know. It's loose, all right. I'll bet this is the same ring Gildersleeve has been offering girls for the past 20 years. <laughs> Should be. Mr. Gildersleeve has been eligible a long time. Well, he's not eligible around my house. P.V., did he say who he's giving it to? No, he didn't. Did he mention my sister Paula? Yes, he did. Oh, no. What did he say, P.V.? Well, I guess it's no secret. He said you could go your way and he and your sister would go theirs. Oh. Oh, did he? Why, that wall-eyed water buffalo. He can't give her an engagement ring. He can't marry my sister. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, I suppose it could happen. In these days, when everything in the world's a little haywire, I suppose I could even draw Gildersleeve as a brother-in-law. Well, you could do work. It isn't possible. <laughs> Evie, I must do something about this. I don't know what I'll do yet, but I'll think of something. So don't tell Gildersleeve I know the awful truth. Yeah, yeah. But I'll break it up if I have to run that presumptuous water peddler out of town. Hey, find me, Mr. Bullard. Gildersleeve, are you back? My car won't start again. Would you mind giving me a gentle push? I'll give you a push. Right into your reservoir! <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Here's an idea for an attractive, colorful salad your family will greet with enthusiasm. Arrange chilled orange and grapefruit sections, pinwheel style, on a bed of crispy lettuce. Put a bright red maraschino cherry in the center of the pinwheel, and, this is important, serve with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip will give that salad an irresistible flavor. Yes, Miracle Whip is delicious. It has a flavor that's lively and teasing, a flavor that most folks call just exactly right. And it's a flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing because Miracle Whip is actually a different kind of salad dressing. Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe that combines the very best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. And Kraft blends Miracle Whip a very special way to give this salad dressing perfect satin smoothness. Treat your family to colorful, attractive salads often and make them more delicious than ever with America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip. Get a jar tomorrow. There's only one Miracle Whip salad dressing, and it's made only by Kraft. Be sure you see the name Miracle Whip on the jar you buy. Irascible Rumson Bullard always suspects the worst of his neighbor, the great Gildersleeve. The worst he has ever suspected is that the water commissioner plans to give his sister an engagement ring. Mr. Bullard has worked himself into such a state that he's enlisted the aid of his lawyer, Judge Hooker. Is the water commissioner in? In my office, Judge. Come in. Oh, there you are, Gildersleeve. <laughs> 
Where's your office force? Floyd and Lovey. Yeah, I don't call them much of a force around the office. They're still working for you, aren't they? Yeah, still working hard. Running up and down stairs for coffee. May I sit down? Certainly. Why so formal? Well, this is business. I'm here in the interest of my client. Your client? Rumson Bullard. Of course, I'm not supposed to be here. It's a secret. Oh? But in view of our long-standing friendship, Gilday, I think I should lay my cards on the table. I'm supposed to get you out of town over the weekend. You are? Now, let me see. Where will we go? How about driving up to Half Moon Lake and fishing for perch through the ice? Two glorious days. What a weekend. Sitting on the ice, waiting for a perch to bite. <laughs> no, thanks, Judge. I'm not interested. I have a date with Paula Saturday night. She's taking me out to her country club. Well, if you prefer Paula to a perch... <laughs> Bad idea. Where'd you get this silly idea? From my client, Rumson Bullard. You, oh, my goodness. What's Bullard up to now? To be candid, Gilda, he's trying to keep you away from his sister. You mean he's worried about Paula and me? He saw the engagement ring you left to feed his, Gilda. That ring? Yeah. <laughs> that's the funniest thing I ever heard. <laughs> well, what's the funny? Yes, that's Marjorie's engagement ring from Bronco. She just wanted the stone tightened. Oh, so that's it. Well, I'd better go tell Rumson he has nothing to worry about. Judge, don't you dare. What? If Bullard thinks I'm going to give that ring to Paula, let him think so. Let him worry. But Gilday... If Bullard thinks it'll serve him right, just let him stew. This that's the best thing. Best thing that ever happened. Gilday... Don't you say a word to him, Judge. Every dog has his day, and I'm going to have mine. Yeah, I wish I could be a mouse in his house. Watch old Stoneface cry. Excuse me, Judge. You are the department. Gildersley speaking. Rob Morton? You... Paula? Is that Paula? Quiet, Judge. Uh, Rob Morton, would you mind terribly if we postponed our date for Saturday night? Postponed our date? What happened, Gildy? Quiet, you old goat. <laughs> Anything wrong, Paula? Well, I really don't know. Rumson is acting very strangely. He's insisting that I leave town. You? Are you sending you perch fishing, too? <laughs> what was that? He ate nothing. New convertible? Mm-hmm. He wants me to drive it to Arizona for a long vacation. I have no idea what brought this on. Have you? Oh, I can't imagine. <laughs> I, I don't quite know what to do. Well, why don't you take the car and sort of think about the vacation? Oh, but he wants me to leave before Saturday night. In that case, why don't we have our date tonight? Well, I can't do that. Rumson wants to take me to dinner tonight. He's really scared. I, I beg your pardon? You're nothing, Paula, nothing. Look... Why don't you tell him I insist on coming over early, before dinner? Tell him I have a little present for you. A present? Yeah, that's right. Be sure and tell him that. I'll be over about 5 o'clock. Oh, all right, 5 o'clock. See you then. Bye. Goodbye. Well, what are you looking so pleased about? Yeah, I've got Bullard on the run this time. <laughs> He's shaking in his boots, buying Paula a new car, sending her off to Arizona, taking her out to dinner. You wait till she tells him I'm coming over at 5 o'clock with a present. You'll think it's the ring. That'll be the last straw. Gildy, you're playing with fire. Don't worry, Judge. When the time comes, I can turn on the water. <laughs> Marjorie! Bertie! That's you, Miss Gildy, please? Yes, I'm home, Bertie. I'm just starting dinner. Well, I have a call to make for dinner, Bertie. Across the street. Thought I'd freshen up a little. <laughs> You're up to something, Mr. Gildersleeve. You got a sparkle in your eye. Bertie, I'm sparkling all over. <laughs> Do I have a clean shirt? Yes, I just hung them in your closet. Good. You take this box of candy, will you, Bertie? Put it someplace where Leroy won't get his big paws on it. Oh, Valentine, kid. Ain't that something? This for Miss Paula? Yep. Uh, did you have my ring fixed, Dunky? Yep. You're right here in my pocket. There you are. Oh, that's perfect. Why are you looking so happy? Yeah, I haven't time to go into details now. But Mr. Bullard saw your engagement ring at Peavy's. He thinks it's mine. And I'm going to give it to Paula. He's boiling. <gasps> oh, Unky, not really. You bet. Yeah, I'm going over there in five minutes with a box of candy. You think I'd bring the ring? 
Can't wait to see his face. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. And the nice part of it is, Bullard doesn't. Huh? How do I look, Rumson? What? What? Oh, oh, very nice. But aren't you dressing a little early, Paula? It's scarcely five o'clock. We won't be going to dinner until seven. Well, I know, but Throckmorton's coming over at five. What? Uh-huh. He said he was bringing me a present. And for some reason, he wanted me to be sure to tell you about it. Oh, that diabolical ox. <laughs> but, Rumpson... Paula, you must not see him. We'll pull down all the shades. Bar the door. We'll, we'll do we'll... nothing of the sort. Please, please, after all I've done, Paula, a new car, vacation, money. You can't marry that Reservoir Romeo. Marry? Well, who said I intended to marry him? Well, you don't know this, Paula, but I discovered this noon that Gildersleeve has an engagement ring. I saw it at Phoebe's drugstore. He was taking it to the jeweler to have the stone tightened. He's going to ask you to marry him, Paula. He's going to... <laughs> yes. Well, is that funny? <laughs> Rose. Yes? It wasn't Throckmorton's ring. It wasn't? That was Marjorie's engagement ring. I walked down to the corner with her this morning. She told me she'd asked her uncle to take it to the jewelers for her. I've been hoodwinked. <laughs> Windled. Oh, well, if you'd only told me. Oh, that's why he wanted to be sure I knew he was coming over at five. That deceitful water merchant has had me on. He's been chortling behind my back. <laughs> Marriage is the last thing Throckmorton would think of. Why, it's never entered his mind. Oh, it hasn't, eh? <laughs> well, Paula, I see our large friend coming across the street. I'd like a word with him alone. Don't be long. So marriage is the last thing he would think of. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine candy. If I don't look like a man coming to propose, I never saw one. <laughs> yeah, maybe this is a mean trick to play on Bullard. But he has it coming. I'll scare the daylight out of him. I hope he answers the door. I'll bet his face will be purple. Well, Gildersleeve. Bullard? <laughs> don't you recognize your old neighbor? Your old friend? Yeah. Yes. Sure. <laughs> well, come in, come in. Thanks. <laughs> Something's wrong. He's smiling. <laughs> come in and sit down, Gildersleeve. Have a cigar? Uh, yes. Thank you. The reason I came over, Mr. Bullard, I have a present for your sister. I've heard all about it, Gildersleeve. Congratulations. Congratulations? News travels fast, you know. Oh, I suppose you thought I'd rant and rave, object violently. But I'm afraid you misjudge me, Gildersleeve. I'm a sentimental man at heart. Well, when I learned that you were bringing my sister a ring, all the little difficulties and misunderstandings you and I have had in the past melted away. When Cupid pierced your heart with his little arrow... A few shining splinters lodged in mine, too. <laughs> yes, but... Of I... course, I'm Paula's older brother, and according to custom, you should ask my permission. Yeah, but, Mr. Bullard... You have my permission. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Mr. Bullard... Uh, you and Paula are now engaged. <laughs> there has been a tradition in our family, Gildersleeve, when a man makes it known that he has a ring for one of the Bullard girls... He has then declared himself. Yes, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, I didn't... The pact that... has been made. There is no turning back. It is the law of the clan. The clan? The bullets guard our women with primitive jealousy. You do? At one time, long ago, some worthless scoundrel let it be known about that he had a ring which he intended to give to one of the sweet trusting Bullard girl. Well, oh. then he tried to back out. Claimed the ring was not his, that it belonged to some relative. Can you imagine any man low enough to do a thing like that? Zeke. <laughs> uh, 
he met with a fatal accident the next day. He fell into a loom and was woven to death. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mr. Bullard. Yes? Yeah? Mr. Bullard? Yes? Yeah? You see, well, you see, yeah, Peavis, that ring. Uh, your ring? You, Alice. You, how did I ever get into this? How am I ever going to get out of it? Uh, speak up, Gildy. Well, Bullard, you see, I... Well, who's that at the door? Come in. Hey, Mr. Bullard, you're hmm? not here. Yeah, I'm here, Leroy. What is it? You don't mind his ring you put to the jeweler's? Yes, yes. She says the stone's loose. She'll have to take it back again in the morning. Oh, bless you, Leroy. You see, Bullard, that was the ring. It was my ring. All this engagement talk was your own idea. What? No, 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 wait. Gildersleeve, just a minute. Just a minute. Hello, Scott Morton. Hello, Paula. Come on. I want to take you for a ride in my new car. Love to. But I bought that car. Paula, Gildersleeve. Leroy, really? give Mr. Bullard a piece of the Valentine candy. Okay. Hold on. I won't tolerate this. You come back here, Gildersleeve. You come back. Gildersleeve, come back here. Come back here. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. For the best tasting sandwiches you've ever made, don't forget the Miracle Whip. Smooth, delicious Miracle Whip salad dressing adds a truly wonderful flavor to sandwiches. A flavor that's lively, teasing, and just peppy enough. Miracle Whip is perfectly smooth, wonderful for spreading. Get a jar of Miracle Whip salad dressing tomorrow. For delicious sandwiches and for outstanding salads, use America's favorite salad dressing... The one and only Miracle Whip. That's right, Petey. Bullard tried to embarrass me. Tried to make me think I was trapped, engaged to his sister. <laughs> but you were too smart for him. Is that the idea? <laughs> you bet. Before he even had a chance to put the pressure on me, I very cleverly turned the tables on him. You don't say. How did you manage to convince him it was Marjorie's ring? Oh, I simply outmaneuvered him, Petey. Fast thinking, that's all. My, my. Hi, huh? Well, Leroy. Pretty neat the way Marge and I rescued you from Bullard, wasn't it, Unc? You were this. The stone wasn't loose in Marge's ring. She told me to come over to Bullard's and say that. We figured you'd be in a jam. Oh. <laughs> Tell the story again, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, go jump in the lake, Petey. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Will and Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gail Gordon, Gene Bates, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight. A big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of Kraft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Kraft mustard, naturally. There are two kinds of Kraft prepared mustard. Mild Kraft mustard, if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy Kraft mustard with horseradish added if you like it nippy. Get both kinds of Kraft prepared mustard at your food store. It's You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx, next on NBC.